You too can heat your house for four cents an hour. All you need is one of these and four of these, right? Right. Well, if you're as skeptical as I am, I have some information for you. My name is TR and I am a science enthusiast and an engineer. I have to share with you some information that will be helpful. Winter is coming. As winter approaches, I have views of a video that I recorded many years ago, Pick Up. As I gained the initial interest in this, I decided to revisit this testing because I had kind of said, eh, it isn't worth bothering with. But I wanted to get back into this because people were interested in the actual data that I was offering. So I decided to test layouts, not fuels. Please don't tell me I'm doing this wrong. I am only interested in the layouts. And to do that, I have to have a consistent heat source. So I've used four candles. But I wanted to make sure that I was doing it right. Before I tested a layout, I wanted to see what candles would actually do. Just by themselves, no big deal. What does a candle do? How long does it run? Does it change temperature? You know, things like that. So I took one candle by itself and I burned it. Now, someone had said that freezing a candle, putting it into a freezer and taking it down below room temperature by quite a lot, would make a huge difference in its time of burn, almost doubling it. And I, I was a little skeptical of that, so I tried it. I had one candle at room temperature and one candle that I had put into the freezer. As you can see here, ran them side by side, and the frozen cold candle burned for about 20 to 30 minutes longer than the room temperature candle. So it wasn't twice, but it was a good thing to know. And the next thing I wanted to know was, does it make a difference to have the candles grouped together? or spread apart. So that was my second test. And I was a little surprised that the candles that were spread out actually didn't burn as long as the ones that were close together because the ones that were close together, they all shared each other's heat and kept each other burning because all of the mac wax melted, Max welded, all of the wax melted and it burned consistently all the way through the candles. That was my second test. So then I wanted to have a way to record temperatures. I had to build a rig. As you can see behind me, I built this so that it would hold the thermometers that I had. I ran a couple of tests using this system and a time-lapse camera, GoPro. And I got some information, realized that my layouts were bad, but I figured that all out. And then I found more of my thermometers and so forth and so on. But I also realized that I didn't want to rely on occasional readings and it is such a pain to go through a video and pull out the, the data. It just takes time. You know, great for, great for once in a while things, but I'm wanting to do this a lot and I just don't have the time. So I remembered something that I'd used in a previous job. My supervisor knew about data loggers. They are automatic temperature recorders. These are made by
by Lascar. And they are beautifully simple to use, wonderfully easy to get the information out of, and they last for a long time. They have a USB card in them, a SD card in them, that allows you to record up to 36,000 recordings on each device. And if you run them for about a year, it will wear out the battery. I haven't used them all year, so I don't know how long this battery will last. That'll be interesting to find out. But I got one of these, and I ran some tests with it, and I was thrilled with what I was able to do, but I also realized that it wasn't enough information. So that's why I haven't done anything for a year. But I wanted to share this information. The biggest part with this whole experiment was to share this information. I have now gone through all of my tests and I have extracted all, in, all of the information from all of the tests by using the video and getting five minute intervals. However, I wasn't sure how to share this information best or really what exactly to do with it. To solve this problem, I went to someone who works with statistics and asked them if they could help me with some understanding of what to do with what I had. They looked at my information and we talked about it. We came to understand that there are three areas to focus on. These areas are warm-up, the running or holding time, temperature, and the cool down. Now, we're talking about heating something, so the reality is not many people are going to be worried about how long it takes this to cool down. So I'm probably going to mostly ignore the cool down temperatures, but the big information here is that the difference between the layout types is how quickly they warm up, the average temperature that they hold, and whether or not there's a difference in either of those. So knowing this, I looked at my information in a little bit of a different way. The biggest problem is both too little and then also too much data. Too little data in that I only could reasonably pull off five minute increments from my videos. That's why I bought the data loggers to increase my number of data points. But then there's the problem of too much data. I have so many data, so many collection points that determining which one is the most important or how to compare them has been a struggle for me. But I went ahead and bought more data loggers. I've spent the last year buying 12 of them, bought one a month basically, and I'm going to begin testing again. I want to have a minimum of two or three tests per layout so that I can prove the difference that the candles make by themselves. But there are two big questions that always come up when talking about candle heaters. First is how much heat can it put out? Not much. And second, how many pots do you need to get maximum output? This is the data that I have been trying to prove. To answer those questions, let's look at this data that I have at this point. Please ask me any questions that you may have about this layout, about this system. I do look at and moderate my comments and questions. So, looking at this data, my maximum temperature, as you can see on the left, never got much above room temperature. And the first group is all of the tests at the maximum. The second group is all of the tests at room temperature. 
and then the others are the averages and the median and the mode. Not terribly important, but the reality is these never really got very hot. And the difference between them is fairly small. But this is where too little data comes into play. I, I want more data points to compare to see exactly where it goes to. Eh, I'm not going to go for five second intervals again, but I still want to have a better tracking of the overall temperature output. And then there's too little, there's too little data where I need to have more tests and I want to compare more data points. Because within each test there are some wildly different numbers from all the data points. And sometimes within each data point. Because of these problems, I've been trying to figure out how best to share the warm-up time, the holding time, and cool-down time for each test. It really boils down to deciding which reading to use. In the end, I decided to use the most consistent yet highest temperature across all of the tests. I have that, fault, that information, as you can see, but I also wanted to know the times, because that's an important part too. Some of them warmed up faster, not a big surprise, but the fewer the pots, the faster the heat warms up and travels out. The big surprise came in burn times. When the pots were lowered, they actually burned faster. Maybe a tiny bit hotter, but still not as hot as the pot by itself. So people telling me that the pots need to be lowered, I'm sorry, but the data is right here. It doesn't help to lower the pots. And because of the chimney effect, it actually increases the danger of the candles exploding. Yeah, that bothered me. I have been surprised with how much heat there has been, and I've not been surprised with how little difference there has been beyond a certain amount. And then distances, of course, because this isn't very hot, it doesn't warm up very far away. Now, one of the tests did fail. When I lowered the pots and put the lid on, I didn't take into account the snuffing effect, but it became terribly obvious very quickly that that's what was happening. The lowered pot with the lid could not breathe, so that test only concluded that it wouldn't work. I'm not going to try it again. It's not worth it. So can a candle heater heat up the room? There are multiple factors to this, and I talked about that in another video. I will tr talk about that again, I'm sure. But it depends on the number of the candles, the size of the room, the outside temperature, excuse me, and the insulation and breathability of, this, of the space that you have. Larger rooms take more heat as well as cathedral ceilings, you know? But the big problem with candle heaters is that there's a fire hazard. We don't want that. In a smaller room, a few candles and a single pot can heat up the room to a certain extent. But I'll have to go in more into that later. I do hope that I have earned your subscription today. I will see you in the next video.